Hi class, finally we get to do some application problem of differentiation. So uh, for our, uh, application problems in this chapter, we talk about the optimization uh, problems uh, in the real world. We want the optimal way of uh, doing things. The optimal way means the best way. So for example, if I want to, I, I do want to minimize the cost, but I want to maximize uh, the area. Now, before we get into those problems, we need to know the local max and the local min. Uh, we have two, two types of definition. We have the absolute max and we have the local max. So it's just like the name. The absolute max is the highest point in the whole domain. The local max, we're looking at just certain um, certain interval you see right here. So this example right here in figure three, Three, you can see that we have, this is the local min, this is the local min, but you see right here, I have nothing uh, lower than this. So this is also the absolute min. This is only the local max because if you look over here, you see the, this point is higher, but at this region right here, we do have a max. Okay, so... Um, Let's take a look at the cosine function. So the cosine function, we have the local for this interval, for this interval, but those points are also the absolute max because we cannot go higher. Don't forget that cosine to n pi is one for any given um, integer because the cosine and the sines are bounded from negative one to one for all x. Um, so you see right here, cosine of 2n plus 1 pi is going to be ne negative 1, so it's bounded, the function. Same thing with sine function. This example you see is the x squared function, which is the parabola. Now, uh, the parabola you can see right here, we have the absolute min. This one also the local min um, for f, but we do not have the maximum you see right here, so it's going to go to infinity, it's going to go to infinity. So we do not have the max. Let's take a look at the, uh, the cube function. The cube function, you see that we do not have absolute max and we do not have uh, absolute min because the curves go to negative infinity here and we go to positive infinity here. All right. Let's take a look at example four. So you see a sample four, we have, we restricted the interval from negative one to positive four here. And we include the equal sign right here. So it's included, it's the, the points are included. You can see right here that this is definitely the absolute max, right? Because it's the highest point. Um, this one is the local max because it's only for this region. So every time you see this change the curve, you have the max. You either have the local max or the local min. Just like this one right here, we have the local min. But this one also... 3 and negative 27, also the absolute min, because don't forget, we restrict the, um, the, uh, the interval. So we only go from negative 1 to positive 4. The extreme values theorem, um, now you see the condition here, f has to be continuous on a closed interval, a and b, then f attains an absolute max values and an absolute min for some number c and d in a and b. So you see we go the curve. It has to be continuous. It has to be continuous. Um, now you see right here, we have this one right here is the absolute max. And this one right here is the absolute min. And you see we have a couple of figures. And you can see that we always have the extreme values theorem. If we have the closed interval and if f is continuous. Now, you see this one right here. You see this one right here. What do we have here? We do not have continuity. So you see that we do not have the extreme values for this one, right? And then this 
this uh, uh, this function right here is continuous. However, it has no max and no min because we do not have it and we do not restrict the close interval. Therefore, both conditions have to meet both hypotheses, have to meet in order for, for us to check out the theorem. Let's check out this function right here. You can see that we have the local max and the local min, but we do not have the absolute max or absolute min because the function can go all the way down or all the way up. Um, but I do want to point out one thing, that's the tangent lines are horizontal because the slope equal to zero, right? So we know that f prime of c and f prime of d are zero. Now, that leads us to the next theorem. The next theorem states that if f has a local max, a local min at c, and if we do have the derivative at c, then uh, f prime of c equal to zero. Okay, however, let's check out our example right here. So our example, we have the x cubed function. X cubed has a horizontal line, a horizontal tangent at 0, 0. You see right here, f prime is 3x squared, right? So we do have the horizontal tangent line at 0, 0. However, you can see that f has no max or no min. Um, let's take a look at this example. This is the, um, the absolute values function. Okay, so you see the, uh, the absolute values function has its local and absolute minimum values at zero right here, but can be found by setting f prime of x equal to zero because f prime of zero does not assist. So these two examples, just to show you that the converse of this theorem is not true, okay? Um, now, the next definition, this, this definition is important, is the critical number of the function. Um, so the critical function, uh, I'm sorry, the critical number of a function, f is the number c in the domain such that either f prime of c equal to zero or f prime of c does not assist. So that's how you set up and find the critical numbers. So if I have a function like this. Now, I want to uh, find the critical numbers. So what do I do? I need f prime. So you see right here, um, in order for me to do f prime, I'm going to take care of the product rule. Um, so taking care of the product rule, you can see that we have this function, right? So two, two things we have to do. First, we have to set f prime to be zero. And then we have to take care when f prime of x does not assist. So what does that mean? When f prime of x equal to zero mean means the numerator equal to zero, right? So all I have to do is just take the numerator and set it equal um, and set it equal to zero and solve for x. When we don't have f prime, that means uh, when x equal to zero. When x equal to zero, you see right here is undefined, right? Um, so we the critical points are three half and zero. Okay, so we have to take care of both. Now, keep in mind that if f has a local max or min at c, then c is the critical number of f. The close interval method is very simple. Uh, you just have to follow these steps right here to find the absolute max or absolute min values of a continuous function. By the way, it has to be a continuous function and it has to be in a closed interval. So first, you need to find the values of, X, of f at the critical numbers. So first of all, you need to find um, uh, f prime. 
in order for you to find the critical numbers. And then you find the values at the end point, makes sense, right? And then uh, we take the largest and the smallest. Okay, so let's take a look at this example right here. I have the close interval uh, from negative one half to four. First, f is polynomial, therefore I know f is continuous, so it's check out. So I can use the method right here. First, I need to find the derivative. Why? Because I need to find the critical numbers. So when the when I just set it equal to zero to get the critical numbers. So 3x equal to zero gives you zero. x minus two equal to zero gives you x equals two. Next, I plug it in. This is when people make mistake. Make sure you plug it in the original function. So don't forget we are finding the max and the min of the uh, of the original function. If you plug it in the uh, derivative, you're gonna get zero, right? So f of zero, I get one, and I plug it in. I plug in the endpoint, and then I realize that okay, so negative three is the smallest values which is the absolute min, and 17 is the highest values, so it's the absolute max.